So just over here now, it's going to roll three times. What's up guys, it's Unders. In this video, I want to show you the power of the new step editor introduced into Logic 10.5. And what we're going to do is create our own sampled drum machine and then program it with the step editor. If you don't know how to use the quick sampler to build your own drum machines, I will link below the previous video if you want to know how to do that. Otherwise, let's dive into it. So I'm going to start off with this guy here. And I'm just going to build that into its own kit with the old drag and drop and stick it in the quick sampler. Let the quick sampler do its job and make it into a drum machine designer. Beautiful. So now basically what we've got are those sounds sliced up in a drum machine. And let's have a nice chilled out tempo. Let's go, what, nine, six, why not? So once we've got this up and we like all our drum sounds and I haven't re even really tweaked them yet, if we press E to go into our normal like piano step editor per lava, we've also got step sequencer. And because we've put it in the drum machine designer, we've got this beautiful 16 step here. If you're familiar with any kind of like 16 step editor, think like the 808, exactly the same kind of setup. We can play each sample by just switching on a step like that. And that's in this mode here. We've got step on and off. So let's just set up something real simple like that. So real simply, we've got, let's double up that kick. Kind of like that hat. Let's do that, that, and that. Wow, how freaking quick and easy was that, right? All right, great. So we've got 16 steps. We've got one loop. It covers a bar of music. Not particularly great. Top right hand up here, it says 16 steps. Well, we could change it to 64 steps, make it a bit more complex that way. That gives us a whole load of options. 16 steps, a little easier to see and quickly manage though. Well, another way we can look at this is to put it in say 64 steps. Uh, and then we've got the view here. We can just tap here and it splits it up for us. We've actually got a couple of different patterns we can look at, right? And you can see it rolls off into the next one here. We're not limited by this in any degree anyway, because up here in our main window, if we were to maybe just copy our pattern over, well, whatever one is selected is what's highlighted. Nothing selected, nothing shows, this, this, this. You know, if we were to add, I don't know, an extra two hi-hats in there, look, they are not on this one. So we're not limited, it's just really a very quick and easy view as to what you're seeing and what you can work in. So that's it as most basic of bass. There's an incredible depth to this thing as well though. So at the minute we're just on step on and off. We've also got velocity and value. All right, so our hi-hats for example, let's have it so that this hi-hat is louder than this one. And then the ones that are on the bar are perhaps louder and the ones that are in between, not so much. So now we've got some fluctuation in the hi-hat levels and velocity. All right, we could do the same thing with the kick, make the kicks that are landing on the bar just that little bit louder. You know, maybe we want to double up the kick here. So we're just gonna go back to step on, put that step on with velocity, but we're gonna have it really low. Oh, that's so tasty and easy. Let's switch our view back so we're zoomed in like so. All right, so where it says velocity and value, well, we've got a drop down. We can also do things like a gate and put a gate on it. Uh, the note we can change the note that's being triggered on that step. That means we can actually program melodic instruments in that way as well. Uh, probably the coolest one to get used is the note repeat. So let's take the last snare here, right? We can put the, a repeat on by clicking and dragging and we can see how often it's gonna repeat. So just over here now, it's gonna roll three times. 
Oh, instant flam. Super cool with things like the hi-hat as well. Yeah, so you can put all kinds of like fancy movement in just by doing this. We've still only started diving into the features. So let's have a look at this hi-hat rhythm we've got here, for example. We've got this little arrow here pointing to the right-hand side. That means this pattern always goes from left to right. Well, we can switch it up so it runs the other way. completely off the beat that we originally put in, we can have it so it ping pongs or that it even mixes up so it'll play right the way through a couple of times and then maybe reverse itself or just play randomly. Really, really easy mix up. Then individually, we can change the row step rate for each one. So I could make the hi-hats going 32. You wanna do those super fast trap roll hi-hats, right? Easy mode on how to do that. We can have just like one channel rolling triplets if you really want. If we put that in 80s. Get that super lazy feel really, really easy. All right, if we switch on the inspector, we've got show hide local inspector. Some other things we can do in here as well. For example, da da da, we've got swing. So we can do that MPC swing style by just giving it like 55. And now suddenly it's super, super funky. You can over swing it all the way up to 80. And the swing can be affected in eighths or sixteenths as well. So if we put it on eights. super way to create really funky drum patterns. And this is just using it as a step sequencer. Let's not forget that within functions, we got all kinds of funky things that we can do. And then that within the drum machine itself, we can tweak up each individual sample. So we've got this kick right here, for example, where we can have it play any way we want. Let's pitch it down. Hell, let's pitch it up. Damn. So I took that sample, chopped it up, and put it in the beat sequencer all very quickly. If you want to learn how I do the chopping break process, I did a drum and bass style one, uh, just chopping up the break in a separate video. Like I said before, that is linked below. But I hope that helps you out and uh, have a massive amount of fun with this step sequencer. Now that we can quickly chop samples, throw it into the step sequencer and manipulate each individual sample with the quick sampler, uh, we're in a wicked position to just make these amazing drum breaks really, really easily from sampling classic breaks. Hope that video was helpful for you guys. I look forward to seeing you on the next one.